everyone. I'm Elisa Peirano, and now I will be the uh, trainer in uh, this last uh, tutorial using RIPE Atlas uh, to uh, monitor your network, where you will learn to how to use RIPE Atlas through uh, hands-on exercise. We will ex uh, uh, explain the tools and the exercises before you start. Uh, I'll invite you to approach us because we are going to have an interactive session. We have a few exercises, and it would be good to be in touch with you. Now, let me introduce uh, the trainers, Agustin Formoso, software, senior software engineer, RIPE MCC, and uh, Michaela Galante, uh, also of the same organization. We are going to have uh, opportunities for questions. You can come to the microphones, or you can, uh, if you are connected, you can write it in the Q&A panel. So let's get started. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. We will now start exploring the agenda. Today, we're going to have a session on RIPE Atlas. Some of you know what this is, but maybe some of you never heard about RIPE Atlas. So we'll have a look at some of the elements of the user interface. You're going to view how measurements uh, checked, we're going to look at the APIs and also the command line interface. So the first question is, what is RIPE Atlas? You know that this is a, a platform for measurement in the internet, but many of you don't know that this project exists thanks to the community and the fact that we can carry out these measurements is thanks to probes that are hosted by users all over the world. Now, what is the purpose? What is the goal of this platform? What are the types of measurements we do? And what can I see with these measurements? I can measure the performance of the internet. I can measure the connectivity of the networks. I can see if these connections are stable. And I can also collect information that is of interest in the event of an outage or to do troubleshooting. All the information, all the data from these measurements are published. RIPE NCC collects this through this platform, and we then publish this, and they are available for everyone. We also have historic information. Therefore, this is added value. It's not only about conducting measurements at a given moment when you need it, but I can also check something that happened, for example, last week or at a given moment in time. So you can do queries on the historical performance. The users mostly are network operators and also researchers. There are many researchers who use the data to see how Internet is performing, what things can be improved, and then publish this. And, of course, this information is used by the operators to do troubleshooting or route monitoring. These are some of the applications that you can do using the platform. You can use this for route monitoring. You can do it for DNS performance analysis, for latency mapping, as well as outage detection, in addition to other issues and applications that this platform has. One of the benefits for users is that this platform is available 24-7, so you can use it whenever you wish. That is why it doesn't matter if you are. we are based in Europe, but the fact that the probes are connected always means that these are available to do measurements always. I was speaking precisely about these probes. What are these probes? I have one over here to show you. For those of you 
who are in Zoom. This is a probe. This is a hardware probe. It is very small and can also be installed at the home. One of the advantages of Atlas, in fact, is that it not only gives you an overview of the internet at the level of a data center, but you also have what is happening at the end user's home. So what we normally do is to tell people if you have issues having a small box in an office or in a data center that might get lost, we recommend using these hardware probes at home and you connect it to the network you have at home. It always provides coverage and can be useful for everyone. And otherwise, for larger organizations and for data centers, what we recommend is to use an anchor. An anchor has more requirements. This is more complex. It is also more stable, but it has further requirements. So it's not about installing an anchor at home, but this is mostly for a data center. We also have a virtual version, and we have developed quite a number for the Latin American Caribbean region. So what do these probes do? The probes make measurements possible. They collect the data, and this information is submitted to RIPE NCC. It is relayed to RIPE NCC. We compile this information, and we produce maps and other visualization options. And one of the important things that we're asked about has to do with security. Many people believe that they listen to the local traffic, but that is not the case. and they cannot measure the local network. And there are other security features. We have a document describing all the security-related issues. We recommend you read this in the event of having any concerns, any thoughts. This probe also has a software version. You don't need to have the hardware probe. This is available, and you can install it in several operational systems. So as we were saying, this is a platform that is deployed worldwide. This means that it doesn't matter where the user is located and where the target is, as long as there is coverage. In this map, what we can see is that you have a user in the United States but has a global network and needs to do troubleshooting of a target located in South Africa. Now, the problem was reported from Latin America and from Asia. So if you have probes there, troubleshooting can be done. So you only have to do the measurement and tell the probes, please, ping this target, they s you select the probes in the two localities of interest, and then it reports back the results. This is the coverage worldwide. As you can see, there is a lot of green, but also there are some parts in red. The red dots are the connected probes. In red, you have probes that are disconnected when we took this image. This doesn't mean that they're always disconnected. Those that are disconnected for a long period of time are then removed from the system. Now, the probe, because it has a very simple hardware, it might get disconnected or also for local reasons, for example, power supply. So a probe might be available at a given moment in time and, when I, or, or, and then disconnected or the other way around. We now have 12,000 connected probes and 800 anchors. Measurements. One might ask oneself, what measurements can we do with this platform? We cannot do every single type of measurements, but these are all the ones that we do. There are six different types, ping, trace route, DNS, SSL and TLS, HTTP, HTTP, only if I have one of the anchors as a target. 
there are two types of measurements. We have the built-in measurements. These are the ones we do at RIPE and CC. These are measurements aimed at targets of common interest, for example, the root servers. And we also have a mesh between all the anchors. As a result, we have a large number of measurements and creates a regional image which is very complete. And the user doesn't need to do this. And of course, we have the user-defined measurements, something specific that we haven't measured. So in these cases, users can do their own measurements, defining the target of their measurement. This platform is free of charge. We are a non-profit organization like LACNIC, which is one of the regional registries. So the intention is to contribute to the community and because this is a project that exists thanks to the community. But we also have a credit system. This is because we needed to ensure that someone would look after these probes. This was like a motivation. If you host a probe, we get, you give you the credits. So we have different levels of participation and levels of credits. So how do you obtain credits to conduct these measurements? You can host a probe. You can host an anchor. You can be a sponsor, or you can be a member, and also you can earn credits through credit transfer. So for the purpose of the exercise we'll be carrying out, you can also receive a voucher and enable that voucher. This is also important because what we see here are the available interfaces in Atlas to create and visualize measurements. We have the web interface, we have API and command line interface. As we saw in the agenda, I'm going to we're going to have do some exercises on the user interface. Elisa will share with you the APIs and within the command line interface. In addition to that, we have streaming and BigQuery, but that only for the purpose of visualization, not to produce measurements. This image also shows that on one side you have the user, in the middle we have the controller and the data repository, and on the right you have the probes. So what does this mean? This means that users, and this is also related to security, users never interact directly with the probes but always have to go through a high security system, which are the controllers and the data depositories that we have at RIPE and CC. Any questions? No questions? So let's get started with a fun part of this tutorial. Let us now explore the platform together. What do you need to use RIPE Atlas? You need a RIPE NCC account. I would like to ask you who here in the room has a RIPE NCC account? Raise your hand. And who does not have an account and would like to do these exercises and wishes to create an account? So what we need to do now is to give you some time for those of you who don't have an account so you can create your account. Go to atlas.ripe.net. So at atlas.ripe.net, you can see an icon on the right. 
go to login if you have an account and if you don't have an account go click on login and there sign up under sign in you click on sign up on that tab and there you can create your account once you register you receive an email you have to enable your account through an email and then you need a two-factor authentication to do this rapidly if you don't have a way to do your authentication maybe the google authenticator is the fastest way to do so right now and if you have any issues please raise your hand and we'll go up to you So in the meantime, I'll log in myself. Is there anybody that, uh, that was unable to open an account? Do you need any help? All those of you. Uh, is anybody uh, still trying? There's somebody raising uh, their hands there. Bueno, mientras uh, Agustina ayuda por ahí, seguimos. If, if somebody needs help. Vuelvo a la presentación porque lo que necesitamos. So what we need to be able to use Atlas is not just having uh, an access account, but uh, we need credits if we are to measure. So now we are going to give away a million credits in the code is LACNIC42 with an uppercase uh, in a single word and let me, I'll show you how to do it. Those of you who are logged, logged in, you see that you are in a dashboard uh, as if it were the home page and you have to look for the card that shows my credits. So there, go to manage credits and click on redeem voucher and here write down the code so and then uh, after redeeming uh, you need to put refresh and only then are you going to be able to see it does it work? Could you do it?
ਜਾਂਦਾ ਨਾ ਲੈ ਚੋਂ ਪੋਇਟੋ ਮਸ ਗਰਾਂਡੇ ਪਰ ਕਿ ਸੇਵਾ ਮੇਹਰ ਤੋ ਰਿਪੀਟੋ ਇਲ ਕੋਡਿਕ ਲੈਟ ਮੀ ਰਿਪੀਟ ਦਾ ਕੋਡ ਇਟਸ ਲੈਕਨੇਕ 42 and you go to my credits in the dashboard manage credits and redeem voucher Should we go on? So now we have the account, we have credits, we are ready. But the first part that I want to show you is to see a measurement. How do you find a measurement in Atlas? And why is it that we start here? It's the easiest thing, of course, but here there's not, you don't even need an account. For those of you who couldn't create an account or you didn't have the time to do it, well, you can participate in this exercise. And also, I want to especially uh, want to tell you about why to see uh, the measurements because as we have many measurements uh, already by the users your goal may already be covered by others so before you start with very complicated measurements maybe check whether nobody has done it and whether you this uh, meet meets the needs uh, uh, So what we see in the measurements part, we are going to explore it together. We see two uh, tabs, one for public uh, measurements and the other one is where you'll see the measurements that you um, make. And, uh, and then in all, and uh, that is uh, the recommended action. And I also see that there are Uh, filters you can filter by type of measurement and there I see that uh, the goal is mentioned but maybe done by a user so it doesn't help you much if we don't know the description we we see how many probes are participating and I also see if the measurement is uh, a one-time measurement or a periodic or regular so you can can be either case and we are going to see that uh, later on so you have all built-in and anchoring so now let me give you an exercise so we try to find that measurement you need to go to measurement through the menu and there click on ISD can you see it Seven four six three six eight five seven. That's the ID. Let me do it too. So I go to measurements, and here I put the ID, and I find the measurement. Did you find the measurement? Yes. So I go to the ID to see what else I can see. And this is a measurement done in Chile, it's a trace route in Chile. All the probes are in Chile. And 
the objective we see an IP there and because of the response times we can assume with quite a degree of certainty that it's in Chile too but I don't just see green dots in this map in this map I see it, they're telling me the response times that I had uh, with uh, that uh, and I see most of them but I see that in orange so I see the trace one but that's a summary how can I see the details so I, I go to the results and there I can see more details I can see the probes that uh, were involved in this measurement the uh, response times the number of ops and if the trace route uh, reached the target so what we can do is to see the ones in orange because they they might be the most interesting ones because because i want to see why i'm getting unexpected results so i can put this in order i put it in the networks And here we see that it's quite high. What I can do is go to the trace route and if through the information here uh, to draw more information from it. Because I want to see why there's such a long response time. So who can tell me? Of those of you who are, that are participating in, in this exercise, of course you can't see it in, uh, on the screen, but who can tell me what happened here and why we have that type of response? Hi, ma'am. Uh, a chocolate bar for Jaime. We're going to start distributing chocolate. And so it's going through Miami. So now we don't really know why. But thanks to that, we can analyze it. So if it's unexpected, what I can do is to see further details and to see why it goes through Miami. The, it may be that the configuration is correct, but that the result is in, unexpected. So you can see uh, more details with more specific uh, detail uh, why do we have this result. And here, too, we have the details of the measurement, the parameters, um, and uh, the cost. Um, if you, unless you have millions of credits and uh, the uh, probes that participated. Let me go back to the presentation. Any questions? Let's go on. So now let's create a measurement. And now we need to be logged and have uh, the credits that we had claimed earlier. So go back to the dashboard and find a card that is called quick look measurement when you find it i want you to measure a goal uh, it shouldn't all be lacnic.net because if not we somebody's going to fail because we have a limit uh, of objectives of a goal. So put uh, your network or an IP that you know that you can ping, or your domain, or your favorite uh, website. And I'm going to ask you to select local, and, and later I'm going to explain why. 
voy a hacer yo también. I'm going to do it too. Voy a la dashboard. I go to the dashboard and here I have a, my quick uh, look measurement. This is one of the previous ones. Uh, here I'm going to put uh, my objective. I'm going to put LACNIC.net because you won't. <laughs> and I'm going to ping. And here I will choose local. Why local? Well, that's something that we were asked here. As a matter of fact, this we received this from one of the users. He told me that uh, selecting globally doesn't make much sense, especially when there is less coverage, because it chooses most of the probes where there is more coverage. So the results were, would have a, a high latency, but that was to be expected. Australia, we have a long latency, and so the same applies to Europe if we are here. So by putting local, you can request uh, the system, please give me only probes in this region or close to where I am. So let's create the quick book, uh, quick look. And this one, this you get a result, and uh, it will appear in my measurements. You have an ID, an objective, and there you can see further details. That's the use case that you need. You need uh, uh, the. Uh, the scope of the network of a certain uh, objective, but you don't have a time for a more complicated measurement. So that may give you an idea of the latencies at a given time. You, you can use the, the test route too, and you can see the same results that we had seen earlier with uh, visualizing the measurement. Bueno, aquí van apareciendo los probes, tardan un poco, y aquí tengo... So here I have the results. So it's the same as before, it allows me to see more results over here. And I can then organize this. So did you find the quick look measurement? Go up to the microphone, please. The thing is, at the beginning, because I had a delay with the authenticator, I couldn't redeem my credits. And so I couldn't conduct the measurements. Ah, the credits. You need to have a code. It's LACNIC42, uppercase, and all together. And where do you send this? What part do you do redeem this? In my credits and manage credits. So now, I will show you how to create a somewhat more complicated measurement. We're not going to do the exercise because we have more exercises with Agustin with a command line interface. We would rather dedicate more time to that because this part is very intuitive and easy to use. So the intention is that you explore this on your own. So we'd rather dedicate more time to the technical part. So let me now show you how to create a measurement and the available parameters when you create a measurement normally. So I go to measurements. I click on create measurement. And there I have a form that allows me to select 
the type of measurement I wish to have. I can define the type of measurement. Then step two is to select the probes. By default, you have 50 probes in the world, but you can eliminate that and select the, wish, the ones you wish to have. So I can use a map. I can do this by region, by country, by prefix, and by autonomous system number. I can also select an IDS list of probes. If you have probes that are distributed or if there are other probes that you're interested in, you can have a list over here and include that with the IDs. And you can also use the same. You can reuse the ones from an existing measurement. And this is what I mentioned before, this measurement can be do just once when I need to check something momentarily. And others can be if you wish to do monitor a network. So in that case, you can set a regular periodic measurement. And this allows you to enter the start time and the finish time. And you can also include other parameters. For example, I can enter the frequency once a day over a one-year period, for example, or more frequently, once an hour. So you can define the frequency of the measurement. And this shows me the costs, because it's also easy to do a measurement where you need more credits and I might not have enough credit. So the system will show me that I cannot do that measurement because it will use up the credits within a few days. So either you get more credits or you just cannot proceed. And I think I will stop here. If there are any questions, please let me know. So I give the floor to Elisa. I forgot to mention something in the presentation. You will have an exercise to create a measurement. This is just an example so that you can practice you can do that when you have time to do so in order to explore this user interface. And that would be it. I will stop here now and over to Elisa. Um, so you now saw with Michaela how to do the web measurements and the dashboard with the things you might need. Let us now take a step further and refer to the REST API of RIPE Atlas. This is a very useful tool if you need to automate tasks using the RIPE data. The target public are developers, for example, who wish to integrate data information to the systems they already have. So what is an API? This is a way in which different systems can communicate with one another to the internet. This can be considered like a messaging service. For example, what a system when a system wishes to request data from another system and then receives a response. RIP Atlas API has three key benefits. It has three key benefits. These are, it allows you to automate measurement creation and analysis. You, it's, it allows you to save time and errors. It integrates you with existing systems. 
and it allows you to do bulk operations efficiently. This is ideal when you do large scale activities. RIPE Atlas API has a restful structure using standard HTTP systems such as GET and POST. So this, in order to connect with the uh, API, you need to have an API key. So the IP key can be generated from the dashboard you saw with Michaela. There is a section called IP keys. With a simple click, the form is displayed, and you can generate your key. You have to enter a description, the validity period, as well as the permission you wish to give to that key. This could be create measurements, do queries on certain things, or stop the measurement period you had established, and other options. So because the IP keys are very important, let me share with you some of the best practices on how to manage these keys. It is always recommended to use separate keys for different applications or projects. This will make management much easier. For greater security, it's important to regularly rotate keys in order to have added security. IPs are like passwords, so never share your IPs publicly. And if you suspect that an IP might be compromised, just revoke the key. Now let us see first some of the steps so that everything is ready to call up the API. And then I'll show you an example as to how to create, to compose a measurement. First, we have the preparation. As I said, first, you have to obtain your API key with the relevant permissions. Then you have to select a tool to submit the request, uh, the post to the API endpoint. Then you have to prepare, you have to compose the measurement, like Michaela showed you. This is done in the website. You define the type, if it's going to ping, trace, route, DNS, or whatever you need, and then specify the mandatory fields. For example, the IP, if it's V4, if it's V6, a description, and also, of course, the target of that measurement. So for this to be ready, you have to define the probes that are going to participate. So you can specify 50 random probes from any country or put the IDSs or the ASNs, if you know which these are. And once you have everything ready, you can have the definition of this, for example, in a JSON file, in order to send the request. You might have additional parameters, and you can check this in the documentation, what you wish to add. So now, once you have selected the tool, you may call up the API. You use the API key, and then create the JSON with them, uh, with the created JSON for this. Once you prepare this call, you'll get a response, which is the ID of the response. And this shows you what you can do. You can either save this for monitoring purposes later on, or use the measurements for another call, and then stop it when you no longer wish to use it. This is an example with all the steps that we have just described. This image shows the JSON with the definition of this measurement, the target, which is a ping to lacnic.net. And there it is. And in this case, I asked for 50 probes from all over the world. And this is the call. You specify this in the location where it has to be sent with API to measurements. And in the header, we specify that we send a JSON file containing the information on the calls and the API key for the authorization. And in data, we describe the route and the file where we are going to save everything. So now. This is the API call, and let me 
tell you more about another call, which is called status checks. This is used to use a management as a basis for an alert. So the concept is that you create a regular uh, periodical measurement from the web or from the API, and with the ID of that measurement, you create a call to a status check to verify whether the response from the probes changed or if some of these did not respond for some reason. So based on that information, you can generate your alerts in the event of something happens, happening that deserves attention. So if I have my servers in Uruguay and I wish to check what is happening in the region, I do ping measurements on a periodical basis and with X number of probes towards my server. And with the status check, I first verify the header and I can directly see whether any of these probes lost packets or did not answer using this parameter that we call X Ripe Atlas Global Alert. If it's in zero, it's because all the probes responded properly. And when you get a one, it's because at least one of the probes lost the packets. So, in that case, if it's zero, everything is okay in the network, nothing to do. If it's in one, you go and see the body of the response to see what happened. And in this case, I used just one prob, uh, probe for the example, but you see uh, on the top a global alert that is a summary of the alerts of each probe, and then each probe has its own alert and the last result of the measurement. In this case, well, if uh, if there were at least one uh, probe that were true, then uh, you would see it there. And then with the header, you can say whether it's zero or one, and you can decide whether to do one thing or the other. This is like the most basic use case, uh, a case, case user of a status check. If you are interested in defining more parameters, I leave you the a reference in the slides to a, a more complex example. For instance, if you use many probes for your measurement and you want to define uh, more than uh, 10, if, uh, I, I can set, for instance, uh, 10. If, uh, if, if, I, if you can have permit total alerts, you can define permitted total alerts. If only one of the 500 probes uh, didn't fail, but it's okay. But you can put a limit, for instance, from 10 on. Uh, and another help that you have is to compare the current RTT value uh, to past values. And uh, with a look back, you can tell it to define how many days back you want to compare it to. And now, another uh, format to consult the API. So this is a Python library that can be very useful for uh, Python applic apps. It's called uh, uh, Python uh, a ripe Atlas Custo. You can install it easily with a pip. And here I give you an example of how to create a measurement. In this case, it's a trace route. Uh, there I define to do it to uh, ripe uh, and just to the probes, I say 50 of lambda. And at the end, I call it with the APK. Okay. And uh, those are definitions of the measurement, whether it's going to be periodic or just in that time. And then the response will be, if it was successful, it will be the leader of the measurement. And uh, so well, the part of the API, if you have any questions, Are there any questions in Zoom? Yes, Ariel Fernandez says, well, I try to log in with uh, my uh, uh, IP atlas, but I don't get the details. Check, check your spam. 
just in case. And if not, write an email to RIPE NCC so that they can help you. And Edmundo's question, are the presentations available? Yes, they should be available, and the session is being recorded, so you'll be able to see it. Okay, so if there are no more questions, Aum? Um, I have some slides, unfortunately. Then we'll go to the command line. I just want to explain what this is about and how to make the most of it. So this is first, well, it's mostly for uh, operators. Uh, it's This is what we call the power users. It's having just one place and uh, doing everything with your keyboard, not go from one place to the other. So this is the very powerful alternative. This panel, the idea is, uh, well, this troubleshooting has a lot of benefits. But I think that the most important thing is a quick diagnosis. When there is an alert, well, the panels are in red, and I, quick, I want to quickly know the root cause of what I'm seeing. So if I have a tool like this, it, in just a few steps, I can identify the problem. Let me give you an example, how you see it. This is an example for a trace route of Paraguay. You can see uh, the traces uh, as you would typically do it uh, in the tracebook, and also the autonomous uh, systems. It goes through, and you have uh, more information in this link here at the bottom. And behind scenes, this is the client of the command line that talks to parts of the diagram that Michaela was showing at the beginning through the line of command, uh, speaks with the API, and it passes uh, the specifications of the measurements. Uh, and then, almost in real time, I start to receive the responses immediately. In the visual part, it's going to be very much like the trace route, but it's actually distributed by all the Atlas probe and that send uh, the results to the console in real time locally under the uh, name RIPE Atlas. I have two configuration. One is the AP key, API key, and the other is the local preferences. Each user may have different profiles with uh, preferred probes and other attributes, so as not to have to configure it each time, but uh, that the, the travel shooting will inform that uh, very quickly. So this is the troubleshooting. You start receiving the alerts. I don't know what's happening. And uh, part of this workshop, when the problem is there in, uh, arrives in T0, the problem is not whether it's going to arrive, but when. We have some odds for the failure, to, for the system to fail. But before T0 in T minus, what can we do? Start preparing all the tools, all the monitoring systems, so that all the events of the T uh, plus could be more, plus could be easier. We saw the uh, uh, ripe uh, atlas, and I'd like to configure it. I, I'd like you to configure it with me, so but next time you have to do it, you'll have everything configured. The credits you saw this with Michaela, and if uh, there are networks that don't have probes, and you think that it might be useful to host a probe that will generate 
credits automatically, but it will give you visibility outside and maybe more important from other networks uh, inside. So you put the probe for the service of the rest of the operators. What is this tool about? It's a Python. Uh, it's very basic uh, uh, Python. I leave you the slides, uh, as documentation. It has a classic command structure, commands of command, uh, help. Uh, um, here, you, I can create the measurements. I can list them. I can also change the outlooks, the way I represent the measurements in the console. And for me, the star is how to use the help to go to see the documentation step by step. So this is help. This is the point of departure that we'll see now. And we're going to focus mostly in these four parts. Uh, configuration, generate uh, measurements, look for probes, search probes, that's essential, navigating, browsing. And let me show you from the uh, line of command, I'm going to show you the demo. This is the moment when if something is uh, going to come out wrong, it will. Can you, is it large enough? How do, can you read it? I put together a small lab for this. Just a Docker container. It will. It has the Python installation and all the tools. I have uh, my AI key, and we are going to see it together from the Atlas site. And here, I'm inside the container. I'm going to be in Python 3.11. Can you raise your hands if you are going to install the tool and uh, try it? Nobody else will do it. Nobody dares. So if you get stuck, just let me know, and we'll uh, help you solve it. So this is typical of a Python, the creation of a virtual environment. If we go at different speeds, if somebody is uh, left behind, let me know. I don't want you to get stuck. So this is creation of a virtual environment. So what do I do? A simple installation through pip, Python's uh, repository. Uh, this is called RIPE Atlas Tools. It's a pip3. There, that one was missing. I had to activate this virtual. And there we have uh, the installation of the packet. Many things are in cache, so it may take longer. So I have the binary of a type uh, of ripe atlas installed, and this is just what I had in the previous part. This is the help. Before generating anything, there are many things that can be consulted in Atlas. Without having an API key, it's public information. So for instance, the probes in Paraguay. Do we have probes in Paraguay? Yes, we do in several uh, states. Uh, disconnected, abandoned, but this is a natural site of uh, the probes. What Michaela was showing it has the same colors. 
connected in green and in red. But actually, the ones that are useful are the ones that are connected. So I can filter them quickly to see the probes I can operate with. I know that the probes are in these autonomous systems. This is the second column. I know that if I wanted to do measurements from Paraguay, these are the autonomous systems that have probes today. If I have any countries that have, uh, I don't know, but maybe more probes, I may do things like grouping Okay. And I see that there are some autonomous systems that have several probes, and others have just one. So at simple sight, I can see the different autonomous systems from where I can conduct measurements. We had seen Paraguay, I can ask through specific ASNs, for example, this one over here that has more than one, apparently. And there you have the two probes, the autonomous system with two probes. Now, there is a detail over here. This is the column of the probe ID, and it's concealing part of the numbers. If I ask for the IDs only, the first one was complete, but the second was cut short. And I see, according to the number, that this is one of the software probes, the ones that have higher numbers above one million. Now, this is a rapid way to see what you have, where you can conduct your measurements. If I wish to conduct a measurement, I need to have the API key already configured. So this is a configuration command, and it tells me to configure, you have to set some of these options, and rapidly you can set this variable internally. I can do this in my local configuration of this machine. The command is set that variable, and I have to enter an API key. I already configured my API key. Now, where are you going to find your API key? Let me show you on the web part of this. This is the Atlas website. Atlas website. After you log in, I go to the end of the page, and prior to this, but you have the API keys right down here. So this is what Eli was showing you a while ago. So just give a name, for example, Atlas Tutorial. You copy the UUID. By default, these were created with a validity period of one year, but you have to have the permissions to schedule a new measurement. I give you a minute to create this because you need this to to do this to um, create measurements on the command line. So you have one minute to create this. So, is there anyone who was unable to create the API key? So, hopefully, you were all able to create it. So, let's go back to the instructions. We are in the configuration of the API key. And here I configured my API key in the local client, and I'm ready to do the measurements. Mm -hmm. 
So ripe atlas measure. This is a subcommand where I can create one of the seven types of measurements that Michaela told you when she started. So these are several options. They are a bit complex, but we decided that the typical ones are ping and trace route. So you, there are several other options in addition to these, which will be for some other user cases. So with the RIPE Atlas ping, you type the website, a host, or whatever you wish to measure in the internet. So step one, it communicated with the API. It created the measurement with a specification contained in the command. And in step two, in real time, you start receiving the default measurements of 50 probes w around the world. This is not bad for an initial step, maybe not practical for troubleshooting, but API key works, the system works. This is a good example. So I will stop this stream now. Not all probes respond at the same time. Some probes might take a bit longer. So there might be a probe that hasn't yet submitted the results. If you put ripe atlas measure ping is a bit long. So when you install the packet, there is a binary option where you put a ping, atlas ping. If you put a ping, a ping, and lacnic.net, this is like a shortcut. And there you start getting the results once again. Did anyone make this work? Two over there, yes. Three, four there in the back. So how are we doing? Is anyone stuck with the API key or some of the components of Ripe Atlas? Can you repeat, please? Okay, she's not using the microphone. So we saw you can filter probes, for example, Paraguay, but also have the option of doing filtering from over here. So how can you view blacknick.net from Paraguay? And I do ping over here. If if you look at the documentation of the command, you will see a large number of flags. So you have to get familiar with these. But once you are familiar with these, you can then filter probes and filter different parameters very rapidly in just one single step without having to go to different places to define your measurement. This is how LACNIC.net is viewed from Paraguay. There are 28 milliseconds over here. You see the address where this was resolved, the IP of the probe, and I, the ID of the probe. The same with trace route. I, I have ripe atlas measure, but I write the A trace route command. So now this, this starts to get more interesting. And the same. Over here, from country, Paraguay, lacnic.net. And this is what you can see probe by probe. You see the trace, per hop. And this is what we are more used to seeing from our host outwards. But this is a unified view of all the probes. 
towards where I wish to generate the measurement. In one of the previous slides, I had showed you how it can solve the IP for each host and how this is done by the autonomous system that is announcing that IP. So it has the option, you put trace route show ASNs. This is a flag stating that I state try to solve hop by hop, what is the AS announced by that IP. So I can now see when the trace route enters an autonomous system and when it exits the autonomous system. So it's not to generate from so many probes and not to consume so many credits. I can always ask the command to only select one probe. So I'll be spending less credits. So this is you see lacnic.net has this address in 288001 and you can clearly see when the trace route enters this 28001. These are the things that allow us to do troubleshooting and diagnosis of what is happening. There is a use case that Michela was saying that the HTTP measurements are limited to the anchors. But there is a little trick that I can do with trace route. The trace route is I'm going to start with TTL 1, 2, 3, and so on. And as I increase, I start discovering hops that are more distant. But one of the things I can ask it to do is to already start with the highest hop value. So instead of stopping at the first hop and then at the second and third hop, it directly goes to the last hop. It's not HTTP, but it's quite close to it. It can be a TCP type trace route, for example, to a web port. So the, it's already layer four. It allows us to have a more real representation of what user traffic is, not only ICMP, but something that is a bit above that level. So I ask for the first hop to go right through to the end. And I ask the TCP protocol, protocol TCP. And the same over here, I asked it to go directly to the end. That is why I just see one hop. This is the origin from where this was launched, from the probe to the lacnic.net TCP to port 443. This is another way of doing troubleshooting, looking at the ports, looking at the protocols, and how to play around with the parameters in order to rapidly detect the problem. I will skip one of the examples because we're almost at the end. There was an example I was having a look at. This is ASN 6057. Let's have a look at the probes. There are quite a number of probes. And this is another trick that you can do with Atlas in order to rapidly generate a pingable address. So if I want to generate an address from another network to my network and see what the observability of my network is from the internet, 6057 has several probes. So what Atlas does for the probes is that it generates a special name that resolves the IP address of that probe. So what I can do is I select the first probe, which is 7147. And let's have a look at what we have over here. That is the IP address of that probe. 
So I know that is a pingable target automatically generated by Atlas. So users can opt not to generate this number, but there are a couple of pros that do have it. So I have the upstream. My upstream is 174. I'm going to ping the probe I have in 6057. I know the probe is there. I know this is a name that resolves this, and it can be pinged. So it's a simple way to ask how what my network looks like from another autonomous system. I think that that alarm uh, is because it's 6 o'clock. This is the last exercise, but I think it's worth it. So we have to wait for the results to arrive. It's a demo. Sooner or later, it would fail. It had to. So let's try once again. So with these three long routes that we have to wait until it pings on each hop, that's why the results, it takes longer. The creation of the complete one, uh, uh, it takes longer, so we'll have to wait a little longer before we see the results. But we, what we saw earlier, it comes with 174, and this is the border. It uh, leaves a 171. Uh, one. Uh, so in four, it, it leaves 174, and this, and it goes to 7147, and this is the first IP of uh, what would be my ASN as seen by 174. So this was the last example. All right, let's see whether this is useful. So when doing travel sh troubleshooting, see how you can observe your networks from the outside. So with this, that's, that's all for me. So we went through several parts in the system. Just uh, as a summary, Michaela showed you the web interface. There was quite a good example of location. We saw the one in, in Chile that went through Miami, and there, through the web, you can diagnose that. And um, then uh, there were some examples. There's, the good thing is that monitoring, you can put something reading the header of the status uh, check, so automatically you can generate alerts and different notifications. And I think that this last example was the most interesting thing, showing observability from outside. I think that with that, I'd like to know whether you have any questions or something that wouldn't work. I would love, I would love it if you left this meeting with uh, with this workshop with uh, tools in your uh, toolkit in your uh, box, to just uh, so that you will be better prepared when you leave. I would like to ask about geolocation. You can each, you, we can all put our probe anywhere. Is there any mechanism to check that? Well, users can choose where to place the probe. There are processes that, through latency measurements, we may, you may have an idea of how incorrect the location uh, as uh, reported by the user is. There are ways you can see it, and there are ways you can uh, dispute geolocation. When you think that something is not there, you can write Atlas, and they check whether uh, the probe should be there or not, as in how to report it. Any other questions? Any? Good afternoon. 
Pablo Ruiz Diaz of Panama, of the IXP of Panama. My question is whether when you create the measurements through the API and the uh, command interface, whether those measurements are also reflected in the atlas that you see in the website, whether the measurements are uh, re recorded. Yes, it's all part of the same system. This is just an additional interface to the big repository of results that we have. So the client of CLI actually is not generating uh, the things. It just tells the system to create. Uh, it says, I, I created this measurement with these specifications, and then the, the, you download the results. But what you see through the CLI, you'll see it in the API, in the user's interface, and everywhere. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, so I want to know, uh, um, do they have any cost? Uh, the, the, uh, are you qualified as an ISP just by putting the probe? No, it's uh, free of charge. So hosting a probe is free of charge. You don't have to pay anything. Now, what I recommend is that if you can install software then it's much better because so you won't depend on uh, uh, things to be sent to you, especially from Europe or from distant places. And the anchor, we recommend the uh, virtual one. If you have virtualization in a data center, it's much better to put it virtual. And there is a hardware version too, but there the organization has to purchase it. So that is a cost that the organization should be ready to pay. <clears throat> so, Elise and I are going to be close to the LACNIC uh, uh, booth. Uh, if you want to be uh, to learn more about the platform, please come and ask us. We'll be ready to answer any questions. We had some probes to hand out, but we have a few. So we we are considering where these uh, hardware probes uh, could be. Uh, so if you are interested, we'll see whether the autonomous system could be interesting with the strategy. So if there are no more questions, then we will put an end to this um, tutorial. I want to thank the trainers and all the uh, audience, both here and uh, remote. And we'll meet again tomorrow at 9 a.m. local time to continue with Lucknow, the uh, um, closure of the hackathons and uh, Lucknow, uh, Lucknow 42, Lucknow 2024.